Episode 19. <laughs> of the average. I almost forgot the number again, even though we just looked it up like 10 times. Sorry. Episode 19 of the average nobody's podcast. We're uh, continuing a trend from last week's episode. We're, uh, we're going to roll into the Oscars. Oscars are, if you're watching this tonight, which is the 27th, mm-hmm. then the Oscars are tomorrow on the 28th. Yes. So this is going to be our preview and who we think is going to win the Oscars tomorrow, those little golden statues that you might not know about. Did you know they were named after my cousin Oscar? I didn't know that. Yes. How old is he? He's 170 years old. I was going to say, because it's the 88th <laughs> Oscar, so he has to be at least kind of old. Yeah. Good for him, though. I crack open my 40. There you go. Mm. Oh, yeah. It's a beautiful sound. That's good. Now, the, unfortunately, but they kind of brought it upon themselves, but there is kind of some, some controversy surrounding the Oscars this yeah. year. And the controversy is the lack of diversity, meaning for... I mean, all the major acting categories, best actor, actress, supporting actor and actress. There is not one black man or woman who is nominated. Yeah. yeah. Now, there's two sides of the spectrum, in my opinion. Yeah. You can say, well, maybe there just wasn't any good... Talented black Black actresses, actors, actresses actors. this year. Or you can say something's wrong. Something. I tend to take the something's wrong approach because yeah. I saw Creed and Michael sure. B. Jordan and Ryan Coogler. Yeah. I think it, I think the the bigger crime is, and I haven't seen Creed, but I've seen um, Kugler's other movie with uh, Fruitvale Station. Yeah, and it's he's he's an amazing director. And what, from what I heard, it carries on in Creed. So I think that that's too bad. That yeah. he didn't get nominated for best director. But yeah, I mean, maybe it is a problem. Because uh, I, I mean, I don't think you want to get to the point where it's like you're just nominating people because they're black. Yeah, of course, you know, of which course. it's probably going to be, or just nominating people because they're white. I mean, right. it's the same thing. It, it should be based on talent. Yeah, America. and uh, honestly, if you, uh, I don't know, because well, let's see, the best actors are Brian Cranston, who I didn't see, but he's amazing. The only one I, I think, maybe could be taken. I didn't see the movie, but Steve Jobs, Michael Fassbender. Uh, I think it's he's more nominated on name than anything else. It's like, yeah, I, I heard a lot of bad things about that movie. Me right? too. Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I heard. It was just a weird movie because they, had, they came out with Ashton Kutcher one. It seems like, well, ever since Steve well, Jobs died. It's like, it's the, overloaded. It's been flooded. Yeah, the place has been flooded with Steve Jobs, like documentaries and biopics and, so yeah, biopics. So. But Chris Rock is the host, which is guaranteed to be amazing. I, I'm a huge fan of Chris Rock. Yeah. He hosted 11 years ago in 2005. Mm-hmm. Um, a bit ago, just a bit, and uh, I don't know. I mean, he he said he hasn't given any specific hints to what his monologue is going to be about, but he basically came out and said it's he's going to address you I, know the elephant in the room. You have to. I, I can't. I I could not imagine that he was going to skip over that. And you know what? If you think about it, like there's not a, a a black comic or a host of color that I think could address it better than him. Yeah. No. Definitely. You know. So it, it, in a way, it works that he is the host, and I, I'm a huge fan of Chris Rock. He's hysterical he's always been hysterical from snl you yeah. know, through his movies so mm-hmm. i think it's gonna be a lot of fun yeah i think so too i think he's gonna do a great job and i think i definitely it'll, it'll, it'll he'll 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 make it meaningful and make it funny which is good um this year i tried for the coveted you know what do we got here uh, we, oh do we, you want to yeah, wanna, yeah. Wanna, yeah. Well, no, we don't have to do it now but yeah. i figure we can bring it up okay no well, let's let's um yeah, let's go over this. Let's, okay. Let's do this. Okay. So, I mean, you're you're the mastermind behind this. So, anyway, we are going to a Oscar viewing party tomorrow night at our good friend Justine's and Jeff's apartment, and we're going to play some games. We got some Oscar bingo going on that Justine and Jeff are taking care of. We also have this wonderful drinking game that Ryan put together that I wasn't able to go over yet. This is my first time seeing it, so. (laughs) I I tried to make it unique. (laughs) I mean, there's some things in there that you're not, because if you go on the websites and you do like their official drinking game, it's stupid. It's like, drink anytime the presenter thanks God. Who gives a shit? I don't care about that. You got to make it interesting. Right. So a couple of the ones that I did that I I thought was, would be funny, um, Drink anytime. Jared Leto looks like a piece of shit. Which I was, when when I picked up the paper, I looked at that was the one I like pinpointed. And yeah. I was like that's it's gonna be right. I mean, it's it's every second that he's on screen. Yeah, yep. I don't like Jared Leto. I think he tries too hard. 
I, he definitely is a try. All hard. the method acting, and which I I respect, but at the same time, it's like you know he definitely enough is a try enough. Hard. Um, a funny one which Justine actually added is drink any time you say, wait, they died? Because they do the montage. And there's oh, always someone yeah. who sneaks up on you. That's a good That's one. like, wait, they died? That's funny. Um, That's good. I have one here. Um, drink any time you're surprised that someone who you thought was an American was in fact British or Australian. Oh, that happens to me. Oh, every yeah, time. absolutely. Because yeah, apparently everyone is British or Australian. Yep. There's no American actors or actresses left. Nope. Everyone's a sneaky Brit. Seriously. That's- yeah. Um, I like the Lady Gaga looks weird one. Yeah, she's always looking weird. My personal favorite, obviously, I think you can. It's a, a couple below that. Uh, drink anytime, Steve Carell makes you think of you know makes you miss Michael Scott because he's presenting an award. Right. And I like the one, just simple two words, <laughs> Joe Biden. <laughs> he's 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 so, he's presenting like Lady Gaga's performance. That's so ridiculous. So that's so. gonna be probably a pretty hev- heavily drink area of the Oscars. Yeah, when Joe Biden introduces weird Lady Gaga, so. Uh, let's see. I can't wait to play this. Let me see it. Um, Tina Fey makes fun of someone because she's presenting. Wardrobe change is a good one. Yep. Um, someone cries. Pregnant actress is a good one. Yep. I like that. Because that, that's kind of like that plays off of the, oh, they died. It's like, oh, they're pregnant? They're, like, you mean, like, all of a sudden. Like, we should know, but yeah. obviously yeah, we yeah, wouldn't. Yeah. Yeah. Why would we know? Um, camera cuts to a person not laughing. And every time I think of that, I think of like Tommy Lee Jones just looking <laughs> like, like he just sitting there stone faced. Like, I don't know if he's ever laughed before. He doesn't seem like someone who is, who would laugh. Like someone tells him a funny joke and he just like puts a cigarette out on their head. I don't know. <laughs> That's just how I picture Tommy. Um, here's a, here's a, do we have eyes on Michael Shannon for the Oscars? Is he going to the Oscars? Because I hope so. He had the most deranged <laughs> clap in the game at the Golden Globes. <laughs> It was like very quick, especially with his small. face. Because yeah. his face naturally looks like a serial killer. So to add that, and then that the picture I used was <laughs> John Travolta <laughs> staring at Benedict Cumberbatch. The printer did it no justice, but I love no. that picture. Oh, the <laughs> one that the one that GMAC has is, is actually the master the one? one. Yeah. <laughs> Let me see it. Let's see if I can. GMAC, is it showing on the camera? Can the camera see this? Yeah. Look at that picture. It's just so weird because they're both in the audience, and clearly the stage is somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. So John Travolta just is just like, admiring I, I have to stare at him. And this was the same year that he, like, <laughs> he like kissed someone on the cheek on the red carpet. Oh, yeah. And then he introduced Adina Menzel. And, there, and the wrong pronounced, name? Yeah. Like, he added so many different syllables to her name. Yeah. It's really not that hard of a name. If you see, like, I-D-I-N-A, how else are you going to pronounce that? Yeah. No. It was, he, it's, he made a mistake. I mean, maybe you can say Idina. But he said something like totally different. So, something way off. Anyway, I'm very excited about this drinking game. I can't wait to get get on this. It's gonna be fun and get this going. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And then the bingo will be fun too, which I'm excited to see tomorrow. Yeah. Um, well, no, I think I mean the, the people you watch the Oscars for mainly the awards. You know, it's cool to see all the celebrities, but obviously the the awards are a big part of it. Um. A lot of the awards, it's a to- it's kind of a toss up because you haven't seen it or you don't know kind of enough yeah. about it. I feel this is this is one of the years and la- I've been trying to do it for the last few years. GMAC was it was last year Foxcatcher? We we were yes. like we uh, GMAC and I. Who who else came to that? And uh, our other roommate Schwartz uh, went to go see Foxcatcher. We're like, all right, let's go see a movie that's nominated for an Oscar, and it was <laughs> it ended up not even being nominated. I don't know what list we were looking at. Good but movie it though. It was deranged. Yeah, it was not even like nominated. But I've been trying to for the last few years, at least, trying to see as many of the nominated Oscar movies as I could. This year, I came absolutely the closest I've ever come to in past years, and I saw every Best Picture movie minus Brooklyn. I just couldn't. I didn't have time. I just couldn't get my hands on it. But the other, I've seen all the other movies, and it's definitely an interesting year. A lot of really good movies, but I think that there's like a few that you know, like those are the ones that are gonna like. There's gonna be ones that are gonna clean up the, and then some are just not gonna win any. It's just like, yeah, it's. Not, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't compare it to the year where you had like a couple years ago. Um, who was uh. Jeez. The uh, a couple of years ago when they had um, Lee uh, with Wolf of Wall Street right, was last year's Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah, Wolf. Okay, yeah. So la- I mean, last year was there was a, lot, a bunch of powerhouse ones. Um, I think this year 
the movies are all really good, and I think it's a good mix. But I think that unfortunately, and I will talk. I mean, we'll talk more about it. But unfortunately, there's going to be some misdirected awards. Yeah, and I'm unhappy about that. Well, because though, I mean, I think the one movie that will has the highest chance of cleaning up is The Revenant. Yeah, just because it's a it's a movie made for awards. Let's you know, let's, well, let's start. And, let's kick off with that. Yeah. Let's, talk, let's talk about The Revenant. Okay, uh, I watched it uh, about a week ago. When did you? When was that? When did you I, see it? I actually saw it on Christmas. Okay. Okay. Cool. The the one the first thing that jumps out and just so you know everybody watching this is gonna be a spoiler cast I mean it's, we're gonna we're gonna spoil everything movies have been out movies. for a while so if you haven't seen it it's your if, own fault. Yeah, if you haven't seen it yet go out and see it uh, or shut the podcast off now so first of all the way it's shot if this movie doesn't win best cinematography then that's a crime I mean it's it, it's, it's an amazing yeah. film it's only shot the director of photography only used natural light when they shot this movie which. I mean the the vistas in where they shot it were incredible. I mean they, you couldn't I mean if you put nat- if you put artificial light in those scenes then it would have made it look worse. Yeah. The, the, there's the, it was unbelievable like the especially for the, the time period they were going for too. Yeah. Yeah, which was like eight, I guess eight, late 1800s I think. Was it Yeah, okay. So after the Civil War. Yeah. Yeah. Um Leo Leo was really good, you know. Uh it was it was a really interesting role for him. Uh, not my favorite Leo. We've talked about this a million times. My favorite Leo is, you know, Wolf of Wall Street Leo. Yep. Catch me if you can, Leo. But he played, he, he was an awesome, and uh, he was awesome. And his, the uh, antagonist, Tom Hardy's character was fantastic. He was, he was unbelievable. You said it really good. It, he, he, drew, he drove the plot. Yeah. He, he absolutely did. So I love this speech, too, about getting, like, skinned and... They like tried to skin him alive and stuff. It was just I don't know. I I, I mean he, he Tom Hardy's one of my favorite actors, and as much as Leo, I mean you could tell what I think Leo in a way. Like I, I read a funny article. It's like a lot of times he's he's not looking directly into the camera, but the camera is just on his face, and it's almost as if he's like, you see what you're making me do for an Oscar? <laughs> yeah, like yeah. you're making me grunt and get beaten by a bear and you know cut open a horse and live inside it. <laughs> yeah. It was. He went full tauntaun on that one. Yeah, he, he, I mean, it's I don't know. I I don't know why he he definitely got robbed in the past. It's unfortunate he went up against like a bunch of other really good movies in the past. You know, he went against uh, last year he went against Matt da- um, McConaughey. Sorry, Matt McConaughey in Dallas Buyers Club. So it's like really tough to, especially it's like though that's an that's an that's an Academy movie. The yeah. Dallas Buyers Club was an Academy movie. It told an important story. You know, it, it was about a social issue. Yeah, and yeah. and and he did the body modification, like Matthew McConaughey did the bat. They love it. Yeah. Yeah. You lose, so they, gain they, weight. That's the, yeah. So that's that's the role that Leo played in this movie. Mm-hmm. He, I mean, I don't know. I mean, as far as body modification, I don't know. I mean, he grew. Up, I don't even know if that was his beard or if it was like a. Yeah, I don't know. Whatever. Um, but you know, it's like the he was he, supposedly on set. He was eating raw meat, like, like raw, that, and, raw bison liver. Yeah, yeah, like that kind of stuff. So. Like okay, that's the kind of stuff that wins you an Oscar, which is unfortunate. It really is because, like I said before, he should have won other times. We'll get to whether I think or not he's going to win, and whether or not that is a good thing. But anyway, yeah. Revenant was awesome. It was really. a very good movie. It was. It was a different, different kind of story. Not a lot. Of, not a lot of talking, but talking where it counted. Right. Uh, Tom Hardy was really good. Domino Gleason was was really good too. Yeah. He the you know he was in Star Wars. Yep. And I've seen him in a few things now, and he's aw- he's been awesome every time I've seen him on screen. So I think he's gonna definitely like blossom in the coming years, especially now so. with a with a permanent role in the new Star Wars movies. Yep. And he was in Ex Machina with. Uh, I didn't see that. Really good. Was it? I have it all you borrow with. That okay. was a really good movie. Um, it's on here for a few things. Um, so yeah, Revenant really good. Tom Hardy, I think. It, I mean, I just, I think my. If you had asked me who my favorite character was in the Revenant, it'd be Tom Hardy. Yeah, I thought he played a really, and actually, it was or that Indian who didn't speak English. Yes, he was really good. <laughs> he was very good. Deranged, enlightening. <laughs> I actually read something about Hardy in the movie. Um, he was gonna take another project. I forgot what it was, and then Leo had called him and said, you know, read the script. Probably Tell me what movie. you think, yeah, and he, he ended up really liking it. And, he, and I mean, especially with, you know, Inaratu coming off of Birdman. I was I mean, just going to say that. I'm, I didn't know when they got him the, uh, the, um, the script. I'm assuming it was after they were filming Birdman. But, I mean, with Birdman winning last year. and um, Yeah. 
it, it's hard it's hard to skip on that when it looks like he probably will go for the the repeat this the year double, you yeah. know which is good but yeah Tom Hardy definitely my favorite character then yeah but Revenant uh, good overall definitely if you can see it in theaters I would say see it in theaters I did not see it in theaters I didn't either but I can't only imagine what that looks like yeah on the big screen it's like, it's definitely a big screen type of movie it figures I see like. Deadpool and IMAX, but I don't. But I don't see. Oh, I see Tokyo Drift yeah. in movie theaters four times, but I won't see The Revenant once. Yeah. But if it is in theaters, still where you are, you should definitely see that. And uh, I agree. Do you have any uh, preferences on, uh, on what we want to slip into next? Um, I mean, I was thinking if you want, I mean, we can just kind of go through the Best Picture nominees. Yeah, you know, and yeah. just kind of talk about what we liked about them. Yeah, I'm good with that. Uh, Big Short. Saw that over Christmas with my brother. Very uh, good. Really good. Really well done. The only part that I hated. Was Ariana Grande, not Ariana Grande, Selena Gomez. Yeah. Selena Gomez is part. I love those cutaways um, to like I like, explain. what's her name? The girl from Wolf of Wall Street. Uh, yeah, Margot Robbie. When she was in the bathtub. She's pretty good looking. She's okay. She's yeah. All right, yeah. She has her days. Yeah. Um, yeah. R- really awesome movie. Steve Carell, killing it per so usual. So good. Ryan Gosling, killing it as always as yeah. well. I mean, you just can't. And then. Um, I also like the guy from the newsroom who was in it. I don't know his name, the actor. He's the the asshole who made up the the sources. In newsroom? Yeah. And he was um he kinda came in and then left. You know who I'm talking about, right? The hell was his name in newsroom? Fact check that. Anyway, he was on uh Ryan Gosling's team. I'm I mean I'm right, right, he was on you... Ryan Gosling's team. Oh no, he was on Steve Carell's team. I'm sorry, Steve Carell's team. Really? Like he's like and little, he was in the yeah. newsroom. Mm-hmm. He was the. He was like that. He like left. He just like got up and left. He was like gone. He wasn't even in the last season, right? Did you see that, that story on Staring Gap? Yeah. 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 So, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. But anyway, so him. He was. He was good in it. Really good cast of characters. Really awesome subject matter. I thought I found it fascinating, especially for someone who's interested in real estate. I thought it was cool. I thought it was really awesome. And it's, I mean, it's, the way they did it was cool because it is, it was such an important part of American history, yet so many people know so little about it because it's just so complicated. And they're right. They created Wall Street and they come up with these terms just to confuse people Mm -hmm. because they don't want you asking questions. And then they do whatever the hell they want. Never have I been so sure about that. Until seeing this movie. Yeah. Absolutely. And I'm like, it makes so much sense because if you think about it, if you try and look on like, if you go on like a Fidelity website or, uh, you know, like you go on like a CNN Money, I don't know what the hell's going on. I don't yeah. know what any of that means. No, the jargon they use is just so confusing. Yeah. And, and it's, it's it, for a reason, it's I guess. Stu- it's stuff to explain such simple things. Like, yeah. It's it, to get people, and, and, and it sucks the way they like, I, one of the, the really like, really like heartfelt parts of that movie that really got me was... When and apparently this was like an actual thing, like the part of the movie where. So anyway, Steve Carell is trying to. I mean, he's basically he's betting against. I can't really cons- explain it that well, but anyway, he's trying to show like there back in two thousand eight and before then, people were they were selling the banks were selling bad mortgages. They were giving mortgages to everybody, even though they couldn't afford them and they couldn't, um, you know. So they were they were they were bad mortgages. And people were going to default on them, and then the whole housing market was going to come down, which is what exa- exactly what happened. But when they went down to Miami, and they were at, they were going around asking realtors, like, what do they do to like sell like their the mortgages to people? And they like they don't get they don't get like pay stubs. They don't do anything. They just basically give a mortgage to anybody that wants a mortgage, which is like the reason why what happened to the housing market happened. And then they're walking around, and they go up to that guy's house, and he's like, um, "Are you here collecting rent? I already paid my rent." Like, and and they're like, "Well, the house is being foreclosed on." He's like, "Oh, well, you you gotta talk to my landlord." So the landlord is taking the rent, not paying the mortgage. Like, how shitty is that? Yeah, and so this family now that's paying paying their rent is gonna be kicked out on the street because they're paying rent to a guy who took mortgages on this housing this housing pro this like housing unit like a gated community. And just like is going to default on all the mortgages. Yep. And, and like I, I never like looked at it from that perspective. But yeah. like, huh? I mean, th- those people who, who are doing everything right. Yeah. You know, in their minds, and then, just you know, the the, the rug gets 
taken out from yeah. under him. That that stinks. Um, they, but they they portrayed it in a good way. The Big Short was cool too because like these movies that are based on true events. It, it's cool how they like when, and I don't know the two characters' names. I recognize them from other things. I'm pretty sure one of them was um, in Aldo Rain's crew in Inglorious Bastards. Really? Yeah, he's one of the guys, one of the two guys, the ones that teamed up with Brad Pitt. And they're in the they're in okay. the lobby. They're trying to sell at the big table for their their investment hedge fund that they were managing. Yep. And they're trying to get to the big table, and they look at the coffee table, and all these um, other proposals. What's his name? Harnish Linklater? Hanish. Hanish Linklater. That's the guy uh, from the um, newsroom, and it was in Big Short. Uh, and they find the proposals on the table, and he picks it up, and he like looks. the people look to the camera, and they break the fourth wall, and he's like, so this is not exactly how it happened. I like that, because yeah. it kind of shows like what's real and what's yeah, not. And it, it calls them out on people who have been like, actually, this part. like That's yeah. what happens in the – not to – go off topic but in the oj simpson show people are like the guy one of the the guys who like lived in it he was oj's house guest kato yeah. kalen he's like in the scene in the the movie we're eating pizza i actually had a hamburger who gives a fuck buddy okay do you no, not understand that's like i didn't read that that's ridiculous yeah and it's like that stops people from doing stuff like that yeah like yeah okay yeah. we know you want your 15 seconds of fame back but yeah. just shut up all right it's based on a true story. Yeah, exactly. So that was cool how they did that. They break the fourth wall. Another cool thing about this movie is a lot of different stories coming from a lot of different angles. Mm-hmm. You have Christian Bale's character, um, Michael Blurry. Bl- Blurry. Bl- I think it's Burry. Burry. Um, who's like apparently like a closet heavy metal like lawyer and he like jams out with his drums in the basement, which I thought was cool. Yeah. Um, and then you got Brad Pitt and those other two kids, their side of it. And then you got the Steve Carell and Ryan Gosling thing, who Ryan Gosling is kind of like basically an anti-hero in this whole thing. Like yeah. he's, he's tipping off people and letting them know what's happening, but then he also is making money off of it, which, yep. is, which is cool. And then they dumbed it down. And now, really, really well done movie. I think the writing in this movie shines. I think Steve Carell's role yeah. shines in this movie. Surprised he didn't get nominated. Yeah. I guess it's tough with the ensemble. Yeah. It, that, I, think that that, I think that that's what the issue is. Mm. I think that he definitely shined, but... Who is who is the lead actor in that movie? Yeah, you know, maybe it's Steve Carell, maybe it's Gosling, maybe it's Christian Bale, right? Dude, the one who who basically kicked off the whole thing. And they're all equally important to the story. Who do you, um, anybody listening at home, comment below? Who you think, if you watch The Big Short, who would you feel is like the keystone of that movie? Yeah. Like, who is the most if you important had to pick character? Up, yeah. In that movie, because I I could even you could even make an argument that Brad Pitt is one of the yeah. the guys because he was one of the guys he, I remember I remember and I forget his name now, but I remember in two thousand eight I remember his like when they showed the actual news things at the end of the movie I remembered his character mm. like he was used to trade on Wall Street came back to like basically make money and unearth like this whole thing yeah um, yeah very very interesting I, I liked it a lot yeah. Um, Bridge of Spies, I did not see. I know you I saw did. it. I'll do a quick, a quick little thing. G-Mac and I, oh no, G-Mac, you saw, you saw Bridge of Spies, right? Uh, I watched it with Lindy. Uh, Tom Hanks, uh, really good. Again, not my, not my, I mean, not the best Tom Hanks role. I thought he, he, he can't be bad, so. Right. Uh, I'll just put that, that disclaimer out there. He can't be bad, but not my favorite Tom Hanks role. Um, good story, really cool story, uh, and it was it was pretty intense. I mean, it, the, he he sent over to Germany to negotiate the trade of a um, uh, one of our guys gets captured and we capture one of one of the Russians and it's during the Cold War and that whole thing and then the Berlin Wall and people are getting shot on sight and there was an American student who got captured and Tom Hanks like goes rogue and tries to also trade for him as well oh, and you're okay. going back and forth with like. The German government and the Russian government. And the German government is, like, you know, shady. And then you got the Russian government who's, like, not happy at all about anything. Right. So, but it's cool. They show, like, the kind of relationship that Tom Hanks, and I don't know how much of it's true, the relationship he develops with the, because uh, he was hired to defend him in court. Okay. Um, did you see Trumbo? No. Okay. It kind of reminded me of Trumbo on how, like, um, he was asked to defend the the spy, the Soviet spy, in court, you know what I mean, to give him due process. But everybody was, like, basically, like, behind the scenes, like, the judge was like, he's going to be prosecuted. Like, this, is, he's not going to get due process. Like, we're only, we only hired you. And, like, Tom Hanks wants to, like, do his job. As an American lawyer, 
he wants to give him his due process and blah, blah, blah. So he develops a relationship with him and, like, wants to, you know, wants to make sure that he gets, you know, all the rights that any other American would get right. in, in this case, which is how the, dec- the, the Constitution is written. Yeah. So, good movie. Tom Hanks, Spielberg. Can't tough, go wrong. Tough to miss that yeah. combo. <laughs> that, that just that I think that's like your. I think if you ha- I think you're if you're a Steven Spielberg and Tom Hanks movie, I think you're automatically um, nominated for an Oscar. I think that's how that works, right? That's yes. how that's how movies work. Yes. Um, Brooklyn, I did not see. Well, I was thinking instead of giving a review of it, we'll just read a couple comments from the trailer on YouTube. Okay. Yeah, um, I've never looked at it, but I'm yeah, assuming they're probably I, interesting. I didn't have anything against Brooklyn. I just. Didn't get around to seeing it. I just, I wanted to see other movies before that. Let's see. Let's see if we have any good comments here on the YouTube trailer. Someone put, what's the song in the end? So, <laughs> not exactly a spoiler. So, good soundtrack. Um, I still hate her for ruining her sister's life in atonement. Fucking bitch. <laughs> Talking about other movies? Yep. I don't know. I think that... Who, who Who's in it? Uh, actually, they got the the lead actress got nominated. Is that the one that Rooney Mara is in? Uh, no. Nope. Rooney Mara is in Carol, I think. Oh, yeah. I see it. Best supporting um, actress. What's her name? I guess it, it's... Say say inertia, because they said her first name rhymes with inertia. That's what I read online. (laughs) Because I was like, how the hell do you pronounce that? Say inertia, Ronin. I don't know what else she's in. Maybe atonement. Maybe that's what that person was talking about. (laughs) Um. Okay, here we go. Here's a good one. (laughs) I wanted to see this movie, but not after seeing the the later half of this trailer. That fucking Ranga guy sucks shit. He is so annoying and crap and acting ruined Star Wars and pissed me off in The Revenant. Ranga? Who's in Star Wars? I don't know. Um, Sayosha. And he's Ron- in The Revenant? I guess so. I cry when she cries. Wait, Donwell, is it Gleason? Maybe. Is so Gleason in Brooklyn? G-Mac, can we get, can we get a quick look up on Brooklyn? Dominal, is his name Dominal? I don't Domino know. Gleason. I think that I think that's right. Forgive me, Domino. Domino. Domino Gleason. Someone commented the racist era of the US with a sad face. <laughs> Not getting much out of this, I don't know. I'm sure I'm sure that was more racist than the era of the Revenant or mm. the era of the Hateful Eight. Yeah. Seems to be a great movie since many years. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> that's not even a thing. The comment section of YouTube is a Funny thing, it is. What do you got, G Mac? Brooklyn, Brooklyn. Who who's like on the top top build cast of Brooklyn? I don't know any of those people. Ah, never mind. Doesn't matter. Didn't see it. Let's move on to the next one. Yeah, um, Mad Max. Oh, oh my god! I loved Mad Max. I I told you this. I want this. I'm not gonna spoil anything. I, I want I want this to win Best Picture. I really wanted to win Best Picture. I wanted to just come out of nowhere and just steal the show. You know why I wanted to win? Because it's just so different than the status quo for a movie. And the fact that it was so little CGI and it was insane. Mm -hmm. And that George Miller has been trying to make this movie for so long. Mm -hmm. And he did it and he did it well. I don't know. I mean, that for me I think is more important than a Revenant. Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. I think that there's there's a lot more movies coming up like that now where a director it's like a passion project mm. really wanted to do this movie just like how Ryan Reynolds wanted to do Deadpool and now Deadpool is killing the box office it shows yeah when the people doing it really really want it to succeed it yeah. shows there's yeah. a difference yeah and I can't remember watching a movie that from legit the first second to the end was nonstop action yeah there was no no there, there was, was no, no like downtime there's no like oh let's have a romance angle it was Mad Max was just balls to the wall. Yeah. I Amazing. It. it was awesome. I watched it just like with a smile on my face the whole time. It I was saw so it, good. I saw it twice in theaters. I saw it once with, uh, I don't know who I saw it with the first time. Second time I saw it with Aaron Paul. Not a so, big deal. That was fantastic. Yeah. I just wanted to throw that in there. Oh, you have to. Name dropped just yeah, a little bit. a little bit. Uh, who was going to be here, but. He was going to be here, but he just couldn't make it. Couldn't make it. I think he I said something it. like, 
And the why? Why would I come? Why? Why are you guys inviting me? I don't feel uh, safe. I don't coming, know who you are. Coming into your basement, I don't feel safe. My friend Brian Cranston warned me about you. <laughs> he knows. He knows. He knows. Your pictures all, all over our our dressing rooms. Mad Max, I love it. When we get to our picks later, you'll see how much I love it. But um, it was a great movie. Next one is The Martian. Read the book beforehand. As did I, Andy which Weir. I still have to give back to you. Uh, no problem. It's in a bunker. <laughs> Where is it? It's at work. Okay. Um, great, yeah, great book. Andy Weir, which this was another thing that I thought was cool. Andy Weir started this the book off. It was like started as blog posts. Really? He wrote sections of the book as blog posts. And then someone on his blog or like a, I'm sure a bunch of people were like, can you make this into a Kindle book? I want to like read it as a whole thing. And so he did. And then a publishing company got a hold of it. <clears throat> and was like, we need to make this into a book. And it's a book. And now it's an Oscar nominated movie starring Matt Damon. Which with an amazing cast. Oh my god! With an amazing Jeff cast. Jeff Daniels, uh, Jessica Chastain, Je- Jessica Chastain, Michael Pena, um, Julia Tell Edge of Four. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Yeah, it, really, really awesome movie. Matt Damon was was by himself, like really funny. And people don't. A lot of people don't like Matt Damon. I re- I I love Matt. I Damon. did too. You, he's you, great. You're a Matt Damon oh, yeah. guy. Yeah, he's great. A lot of people don't like Matt Damon. I think they're just kind of Justine. Yeah. Hates so Matt Damon and Ben Affleck. I don't. Why? I why? don't understand. I think. I think she hates their love. I think she does too. I think she's right? jealous of their she's friendship. Jealous. Because there's no other. There's no other. I mean, how much more can they prove that they're amazing at what they do? Yeah. No. Uh, it was awesome. It was. The, the effects were great. Ridley Scott, uh, one of my favorite directors of all time. I love it. Like Aliens, one of my favorite movies. Rid, Ridley Scott's the man. Really brought Mars to life, like really brought that. Ad- yeah. I mean, really brought the book to life. Honestly, like the whole and who I don't know who did the adapted screenplay. I don't know if it's on there. I don't know who the, did the adapted screenplay, but they really the book was really and you know this the book was really dense in content, like mm. a really long and drawn like not drawn out but a well, really long story with a lot of stuff in it, a lot of technical things. So, for someone to Write this into a movie and, and then visualize not, it, yeah. and not leave out any of the important parts was really good. Yeah, I thought I, it was awesome. I was actually telling Holly that when we watched it, how like it was a very well done bringing it from a book to a movie. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, because a lot of it was the, I mean, they turned it into video things, but a lot of it was just him talking to a journal. Yeah, yeah. You and know, because he's by himself, obviously. It was awesome. I mean, in the way to tell that, I mean, the way to tell that story on how he's telling, basically just leaving his jur- his video journal is yeah. awesome. I mean, it's almost like he can talk to the audience, but he doesn't have to. He talks to the video journal, and the, uh, it it was really good. Prop props were outstanding. Yep. I I get off, and this is weird. I get I am really <laughs> sorry. I am really I get really excited about spacesuits in movies, and the Martian spacesuit is just. Awesome. Yeah. It, re- it honestly reminds me of Matt Damon's spacesuit, huge spoiler alert, from Interstellar. Yeah. It's like orange. It has like the orange yeah. pieces on it. But it's like so meticulous. And I don't know if you guys, if anybody out there um, subscribes to Tested's YouTube page. It's a- Adam Savage and Jamie Heineman's YouTube page. Mythbusters? The guys from Mythbusters. They have like their own little company called Tested. And they do these awesome things. And Adam does these things. They're called One Day Builds. And he builds something in a day. But right now, he's doing this series on Fox or whoever did the movie, Warner Brothers. I don't know who did did it. Um, sent him the master, the hero prop, they call it. The one that Matt Damon wore in the movie. And he's like a huge prop guy. And he is going to recreate it. Like, he does. that's what he does. Like, he does this stuff for, like, Han Solo's gun and his blaster. Um, he does it for other props. Like, the Blade Runner gun and, like, all these other th- awesome spacesuits from... Uh, Space Odyssey 2001, like all those, like those movies and Interstellar. And so now they gave him that. So now he's like taking the first movie, the video he did was like him taking pictures of the, of the spacesuit, like all apart. And he's going to like recreate it. He's nuts. But anyway, the spacesuit was gorgeous. The, the, the hab, the little little thing that he lived in where he grew the potatoes was like so cool and so intricate and like really made you feel like it was like on Mars. Yeah. Really, it was, it it was very well done. Really, really well done. Didn't, didn't seem like. Over in your face CGI, and I love the way what the level of movies have gotten to these days, which is nice because you can easily just heavily rely on it. Yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. not. Yeah, there, there's a lot of guys and who aren't like, doing it. Like you can tastefully do it, and it still looks awesome. Like you can, like I mean, clearly 
they didn't go to like a red desert to film the whole movie. So like most of the background is CGI, but it doesn't it doesn't impede the it's movie. It's not over at all. the top, yeah. And like 15 years ago, that would look like shit. Oh yeah. Like the way they did like some of the the, the Star Wars prequels, like looked like shit with the CGI. It was an awkward phase for CGI. So awesome, Martian. Two thumbs up on the Martian, yep. definitely. Very good. Um, already talked about the Revenant. Yep. Room. Did you see Room? No. So Room is a book. I'm as gonna well. see it. Didn't know. I didn't even... know Room is a book. I don't want to spoil anything for you then. No, that's I won't. Fine. I won't. I mean, there's there's really not not much to spoil. I, I, I mean, I can go into it without spoiling. But Brie Larson uh, is gonna win. It, she's gonna win. She's that's actress. what everyone's saying. She's the front she runner. She has to win it. I'll be very just. Dis- and I let me see. Um, best actress: Kate Blanchett and Carol, Brie Larson, Jennifer Lawrence and Joy, Charlotte Rampling, forty five years. And is that the inertia name you say? Sayersha, Ronin in Brooklyn. I I can't I, I didn't see any of the other ones, <laughs> but Brie Larson was fantastic in Room. Yeah, really intense story. Um, this uh, Brie Larson gets kidnapped when she's seventeen, and she gets trapped and put in a room, and she's raped, and she has a kid in the room, and Jesus. they don't leave the room, so the kid knows nothing but the room. And then shit goes down. It's, it's terrifying. It's, it's it's a very intense movie. Um, She's she very good. I watched it. She was awesome. Yeah, uh, very believable. Which is weird because the only other movie I know her from is Twenty One Jump Street, which is yeah, not an Oscar nominated movie. Let's we'll leave it at that. Very good movie though. <laughs> very good movie, but for other a little reasons. different. Um, so yeah, Room was good. Spotlight. We both saw both saw Spotlight. Yep. Uh, Spotlight. Great story. Yes. I liked it a lot. And you know what's weird? Because I know when we were talking about Big Short, how none of them were nominated. Spotlight, to me, was a similar, obviously a completely different subject line. Yeah. But similar cast-wise, and they had an actor and an actress get nominated. Like Rachel McAdams and Mark Ruffalo. Or, yeah. You know, so. It's, well. I mean, I would have rather seen Steve Carell than uh, Mark Ruffalo. N- nominated Not that Mark as, Ruffalo is bad. Supporting? Yeah. No, yeah. True, but, true, like, true, true. if you're going to if you're gonna nominate one ensemble. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, pick the better one. I guess. I guess when we were talking about it earlier, I meant like it would be hard to nominate Carell or any of those guys for best actor. I, I guess I could see. You're right. I mean, I guess I, could see, I guess I could see it as supporting. Um, it doesn't take away from Rachel McAdams and, and Mark Ruffalo because I thought they were good. I did too. I thought. I thought Rachel McAdams was good. I don't think she was good as Mark Ruffalo. Mark Ruffalo was was like really intense in that movie. Yeah, like he's the one really who's driving intense. it forward. And, yeah, yeah, and like he had that freak out in the yep. like part where like he wanted to, he wanted to go forward with it. Yeah, but, um, I thought Liev Schreiber was good too. <laughs> yeah, th- you know he's a great actor. He was and Michael was Keaton really obviously. Yeah, Michael Keaton. Yeah, uh, great great cast. Yeah. Like again, this is this is has Oscar nominated movie written all over it because it's a very important story to tell. It is the story about the the scandal of priests. You know. Less molesting than, kids yeah. is awful, obviously, and like how they uncovered this. Like I was so in shock. Like I knew this story, but I was still so in shock of the whole thing of how bad. The, the worst thing with stories like that is how bad it's covered up. You yeah, know? yep. They just wipe it under the rug. Like how do you live with yourself knowing you stuff like that? You can't possibly. Live. I don't understand it. No. And the in the Catholic Church is still just just wipe it under the rug. It goes up to the Vatican. It was one of the quotes from the movie, mm-hmm. which is just absolutely ridiculous. So. Yeah, Spale was good. Um, best picture. Right off the bat, if you were to pick one of the best picture movies to knock off the list, what what one would it be? Like to say it shouldn't be there. Uh, of the ones I saw, yeah. Um, just just I'm just by process of elimination, The Martian. Yeah, I think. I but think I, the, I, I think have, The Martian was good. I don't know if it. I was I was really surprised when it was nominated for best picture because I liked it yeah. and I liked Matt Damon and I'm glad he got nominated, but. There's a ton of movies that I really enjoy and really like that are some of my favorite movies that never got nominated for Oscars. Like it's, this is this probably falls into that category, but yeah, I agree with you. Because I, I didn't, I mean, I didn't see Room, I didn't see Brooklyn Bridge of Spies or Trump. Uh, no, Trump was not on there. Yeah, I didn't see Brooklyn, and I saw the rest of them. Wasn't Trumbo nominated? Trumbo was nominated for oh for Brian Cranston. Yeah, okay. Brian Cranston was in. Uh, yeah, because um, the Big Short. I mean, Big Short, Mad Max, Revenant, and Spotlight. Yeah. I can see them. It's, it's, a, it's a valid it's, nomination. Martian's the odd man out on this, and, I, and I'm glad because I was, I was going to say the same thing. Yeah. Martian's definitely the odd man out on this, especially – it's such a weird movie because – not a weird movie, but it's such a weird nomination because 
it was put up at the Globes as comedy. Yeah. As a comedy. It's like, but it's not a comedy. It's no. like funny, but it's not. It it's has a, not a comedy. It's lighthearted in ways, but it's, yeah. I wouldn't classify it as no a comedy. Way. A guy stranded a in Mars? Yeah. Not a comedy. Not a His comedy. His family, you know. No matter how you doing. twist it. No, yeah. It's a drama. It's it clearly a drama with like, you know, comedic undertone, overtone, right. whatever, however you want to fucking say that. Um, well, anyway, so you want to. Yeah. You want to go on to the next ones? Yeah. All right. So, um,. We're going to do this thing right now where I have, Ryan and I, have these cards. Let me make sure this is still. Uh, we have these cards, and on them we have written, starting with Best Supporting Actress, going all the way up this little um, sheet, going Best Supporting Actress, Best Supporting Actor, Best Actress, Best Actor, Best Director, and then finally our picks for Best Picture. Uh, we have these. We're going to go through these um, quick. And we're gonna see which ones we picked the same on, and which ones we went a little different on. So, let's uh, let's start it off. We got for your uh, for well for my supporting actress. I did not see this movie, but I'm going Kate Winslet, and I will explain. Okay, I'm going Kate Winslet. I don't know if you can see that, Kate Winslet. My it reason says kill is, Whitey. Is, <laughs> um, my reason for picking Kate Winslet is I also think a friend of hers. Is going to win tonight, and, and they're going to recreate. That, I think that <laughs> I think that that's too good of an opportunity to pass up on. She won the Globe for it. Did she? Right, she won, or she won an award. I don't know if it was a SAG Guild award More or whatever. Them, yeah. She won an award for this role in 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 uh, in Jobs, and I think that she's going to win along with her friend, who I'll explain. Mm-hmm. Right later. Okay. So yeah, Kate Winslet. Who you got, Ryan? I went with the only movie I did see. <laughs> on this list, uh, Jennifer Jason Lee, JJL, as I affectionately call her, uh, from The Hateful Eight. Good pick, good pick. Um, uh, as far as The Hateful Eight goes, I'm kind of upset that Samuel Jackson or Walton Goggins wasn't nominated. Because, I mean... Walton Goggins is a damn shame that he didn't get nominated. He was so good. He and was as really was Samuel good. Jackson. But, yeah. I mean, at least they got a little, a little, you know, yeah. call out from the Academy. But I... I I really liked her in that role. I mean, she was disgusting and despicable deranged, and deranged. terrible, but she was very good, so I like that. You can tell, and I think this is a really funny thing with Quentin Tarantino movies. Quentin Tarantino loves Jennifer Jason Lee, loves her to death. Not Hasn't been in, really in any of his other work, I mean, works, but just loves her as an actress. You can tell in his movies which actor he is just like, at that time, he's in love with. Yeah. You know it's... You know it's um, Christoph Waltz in Inglorious yep. Bastards because yep. he's such a fucking deranged and amazing character. Yeah. You know, like that type of thing. You know. Because he writes him almost with his own weird fantasies yeah. in mind. You know it's Bruce Willis in Pulp Fiction because yep. Bruce Bruce Willis is a fucking savage in yeah. Pulp Fiction. Like, he, he, he you know that, and it, and it must not even be fair when you're on set with uh, Quentin Tarantino because he must just pay, play favorite. Like, he must have just been hanging out with Jeremy yeah. Jason Lee and, and probably Kurt Russell. Yeah. He just because just Kurt and Russell. It, and it must have been Leo in... Uh, Django. Oh yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. And I don't because I don't think that him. And, I mean, this is for another podcast, but I don't think him and my, um, Jamie Foxx really get along or see eye to eye. I mean, he was awesome in Django. Don't get me wrong, but I don't think Jamie Foxx understands him. But Leo is definitely his yeah. guy in that movie for yeah. sure. Yeah. So anyway, best supporting actor. No, it's not. It's not that. <laughs> Didn't see this movie, but just from what you've told me. Uh, I'm really excited to see it. I'm going with Sly, Creed. He won the Golden Globe. He did. I'm going with Creed. I'm going with Sly. Do you also have Sly? Sly. Good. I I also like Sly, too, because how amazing is his thing, is his, his speech going to be? Well, at the Golden Globes, it was awesome, and I love the one line, and I'll never forget it, because it's really cool, and it makes sense, especially as an actor, someone who everywhere you go and everyone you see... You take a little piece of them or a little piece of it wherever you go. Yeah. And he said, you know, I'm a, I'm a summation of every person I've ever met. That's am- I've, I've taken a little yeah. trait, a little thi- a little that, and then you create your own, you know, because as you get older, you know, you learn things, how to do things in the right and the wrong way. And I just love that line. It was really and, humble of him to say that. And... 1940 years ago? 1975, is that 40 years ago? Right, 41 years yeah. ago? Rocky, the original Rocky, was nominated. Mm. So for him to, cool. to, obviously Creed wasn't nominated, but for him to win 
a, you know, an acting know. Oscar 41 years after like his his breakthrough movie. Yeah, I think that's pretty cool. And, and think, you know what? He deserves it. He was yeah. great. Oh yeah, it's not I, like I, a sympathy I mean, award. He was awesome. I mean, I think I, from all, all I've heard nothing but good things about his like his like standout role in that. And I think this will be a win for Kugler and Michael B. Jordan too. Yeah, if Sly takes it home. So and yeah, I mean, I just I thought he was very good. It was a vulnerable side of of a Rocky Balboa who's yeah. like the, one of the greatest characters ever invented. So yeah, yeah. All right. Best actress. Best actress. As I said before, I'm going with room actress Brie Larson. Don't be confused with Lenny Larson. Which I, don't know I think is. a lot of people are. Right. Yeah. Brie Larson was awesome in room. Really emotional. You're going with Brie, Brie Larson. Brie Larson. Well? Haven't seen it. Okay. Um, let's see. I actually haven't seen any of the oh, I saw Joy. Jennifer Lawrence should not have been nominated, but that's a for another day, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, Brie, Brie Larson. From what I've read, I mean, why not? Come on. Yeah, she, super emotional role, really important. I mean, not an important story because it was. I don't think it was a true story, but I mean, I'm sure instances of this have happened in, on smaller scale. And I think that she. Oh, they had like the Cleveland. She like, made that guy Ariel Castro. He like he had three people living in a basement. Oh really? Yeah, like three women. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, well, I don't know yeah, if it was based on something that, like but, that. Yeah. But yeah, nice really, to know. Nice really, to know these people really out there. Really emotional role, yeah, like that. that. Sweet, real sweethearts. <laughs> um, best actor. I think okay. we're on the same so, page on this one too. Let's go back to best supporting actress. I think Kate Winslet's going to win because I think that Leonardo DiCaprio, her co, her co actor, actor in Titanic and Revolutionary and, Road. I was going to say in Revolutionary Road um, is going to win and Gone with the Wind. Win the Oscar, his first Oscar, in fact. Ever. Is this, is this the one you... For whatever reason, I wrote it as small as possible, but yes. <laughs> I don't know what was going on in my brain an hour ago. Leo. But yeah, I mean... We, we, we talked about this before. He deserves it, in but, general, yeah. not necessarily for this performance, but at as much as I don't think he he's the best one, I liked Matt Damon better, I want him to win so he can just get it over with, and he mm-hmm. can go back to playing cool people yeah because that's what he's best at yep. i don't want to see leo in a beard getting fucked by a bear nope don't want it i want to see leo throwing midgets around yep having sex with girls flying planes you know yep. that's, that's what, what he does and he's great at it so yep. bring him back um yeah i agree i think he's gonna win De- it, deservingly so in general but maybe not he's gonna give one. a good speech too oh he definitely will absolutely will He'll get a nice standing ovation, which he definitely deserves because he is a great actor. So I'm excited for that. And best picture. I'm going to... Best I'm director. Gonna, what? Best director? Oh, shit. Come on. Sorry, my cards are stuck Damn together. Damn it. Best director. Want to flip it at the same time? Yeah. Ready? One, two, three, go. George hey! Miller. All right. George Miller. We both picked George Miller. Uh, I think he... Yeah. It's a Just feat a, for what he did. It, yeah. it is. And I... Uh, Website called Up Rocks. I don't know if any young kids go on it, but it's very good for pop culture. Mm-hmm. And there's a couple uh, film critics, Vince Mancini and Mike Ryan, and they they do a little blog post every Oscar season, and um, they both said just like what he pulled off with Mad Max with a lack of CGI. Yeah, is and they said like as much as because I, I mean I have a weird feeling Inaratu's going to win again because the Revenant yeah. was great, but I think like you said it's more of a cinemato- cinematography thing than directing. And it's more of, I think, a, a, a director of photography type of award for The Revenant than it is for directing. Because yeah. what Mad Max was able to pull off, nonstop action with yeah. a good story, with, like, I don't know. And, like, it wasn't carried by actors. It wasn't carried by anything yeah. but how it was shot. Yeah, I agree you know? with you. I, th- I, think, I think the directing is more, um, more, oh, shit, it's more, uh, like, you need it more in... Mad Max, yeah. then you need it in the revenue. Because think about it, like what's a movie you've seen that even rivaled Mad? Not not in terms of quality, but yeah. like that visually oh, no. was like Mad Max. No, I mean, I mean, not nothing really. I mean, as far as like the the organization of like the car chases and yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah, it was so good, and just the way he develops characters. Yeah, you know, it's such a cool. I don't Tom know. Hardy, I just like the style. Tom, 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 yeah, Tom, How about Tom Hardy, Hardy huh? Cool. This I, in two in two nominated movies. I, I was gonna say I was gonna say it earlier like everything coming up Tom Hardy for this Oscars. I mean, really. Yeah. Um, yeah. And awesome. then best picture, who you got? I got the Revenant. I got the Revenant. I think this is the most remarkable movie of this collection. Like as far as it's striking, 
It's a really interesting story. It's very intense. Um, it's got the, I mean, I love a good revenge story. And I think that this has that in spades. I mean, you can't go wrong with Tom Hardy as the villain in that movie. What, what was his name? Uh, Leo is Glass, right? Hugh Glass. It's Hugh Glass. Uh, John, something Fitzgerald. Yeah, yeah. You can't go wrong with him Not in John that Fitzgerald, role. Though. He was yeah. such an asshole. Such an asshole. I mean, he killed Leo's son. Yeah. And I guess they said, I was reading that, it was pretty much the same. Like, it, it, it's based on a true story, The Revenant. Oh, really? Yeah, Hugh Glass was actually uh, an explorer. Didn't know that. And he got left for dead, but it, it, the only thing that didn't happen in real life was the, the guy that Tom Hardy played didn't kill his son. Oh. Uh, but he got... Bear attack happened? Yeah, he got attacked, and they left him, because, like, back in the day, it was like, uh, who can carry... We can't carry another guy. No, that's... Yeah. So it's like, hey, unfortunately, we have to leave you. Yeah, it sucks. And I don't know if he ever... I don't know if it was a, really a revenge story. I think he just eventually... Uh, made it through the wilderness. Yeah. And, like, because, I mean, you got to kind of look at it from if it, it happened in real life. Obviously, yeah. if, if he killed his son, then, yes, you'd want to go kill him. But in real life, if, like, you're in the 1800s and you get attacked by a bear and you yeah. can't move. Yeah. I'm like, hey, you know, yeah. you had a good run. Yeah. I can't. Right? I can't. Fault. We were good friends, but I have yeah. to go now and <laughs> I forage. I can't fault Tom Hardy's real character on that. Right. So, but if, if he did kill his son and maybe they're covering it up. Maybe. But, yeah, I'm going to go with the Revenant. I went with Big Short. Whoa. I don't Dark know. Horse? Yeah. I, it was cool, and I like Adam McKay a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, he's obviously more known for, like, Anchorman and, and yeah. those Will Ferrell movies. But I was on Spotlight for a while, and then I kind of thought about it. And I'm like, you know what? Big Short was was a little more ambitious than Spotlight. As great as Spotlight was, yeah. I, I think Big Short would deserve it more. Won't be surprised if Revenant wins, which I think it's the favorite. But uh, I, I think that you describing Big Short as ambitious is a really like astute dis- description of that because it, in order to bring that to the masses, you had to really tell the story correctly to expl- mm. to make it like so people didn't leave the theater and be like, "What the fuck did I just watch?" Right. So yeah, I could definitely see that because I mean, if you watch Spotlight, it's pretty cut and dry. Yeah. You know, you know what's wrong yeah. of what's happening. It's just a human. Yeah. Uh, on a human level, you know what's wrong. But when you watch The Big Short, you see, like, all oh, these people lost all this money, but it, you don't – the middle part is just so blurry. You don't know how it got from everyone's so happy to, you know, everything's over. Yeah. So I think they did, just did a really good job of bringing the common people in the know of of something that people really didn't know about. I, I know I didn't know about it, so. I didn't know too much detail about it. Do you want to go through the rest and just give our picks? Um. Yeah, sure. So we're going to go off of the um, just the ballot I have here. So we've obviously done the major top six awards. The next one, next one is Best Animated Feature Film. Yep. I've not seen any of these, but from the internet, Inside, Inside Out. Out. Yep. Inside Out's going to be the winner. Best Foreign Film, which obviously we've seen Don't all of them. Know. Don't um, know any of those. <laughs> I can't even possibly make a good, I mean, I'm going to say Mustang because I like the cars. Yeah. Imagine it's just the cars. <laughs> Best original screenplay. I really hope Ex Machina wins. I actually have read the screenplay, which is the only movie screenplay I've ever read. Uh, I have it printed out upstairs. It was. I mean, the movie was awesome. The this. I mean, the movie was awesome. So it speaks to the script. I mean. Yeah, I could. I mean, I haven't seen it. Um, mine would be straight out of Compton, just because I saw it. I didn't see that. It was really cool. Uh, and it's one of those I want you gotta. To you gotta. So. You know. I mean. Throw him a bone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Give him something. Uh, it's, not gonna, it's, it's not enough to get him to the Oscars. No. But. I don't think any of them will be there, any of the actors. No. It's funny, though, because they're like, everyone's like, straight out of comedy got nominated. Two white writers. Yeah. Hmm. Well, what do you want? Um, Best I, Adapted. Uh, I think I'm going to I'm going with The Martian. Yeah. Was, cause oh, it was, was nominated. Before. Yep. Yeah. Best Adapted Screenplay. It has to be The Martian. So well done. You, you, um. Yeah, that definitely the Martian. Um, costume. Best costume design. I said I, I said Cinderella, but I could definitely see it going to Mad Max as well. Yeah, the Revenant. I don't know how the Revenant got nominated for costume. Costume. I mean, the, like I mean shitty they, clothes. Got, they got the period right. Like it's a period film. Like good. Th- the costumes weren't that spectacular. They it was like black and gray like, coats. Yeah, Leo was covered in blood the entire <laughs> time. Like, uh, like so. I I think Cinderella yeah. is is a good pick because they love those. Like they do. You know, the Victorian era dresses and the way the men drew with the wigs and shit. Yeah, so uh, Cinderella or Mad Max, I think. Best original song? 
I mean, if you think I'm going to vote against Writings on the Wall by Sam Smith, you're out of your <laughs> fucking mind. <laughs> I'm going. I'm going with you on that. I'm going. It's Sam, if Sam Smith needs to rise back to the top, I think this is this is his uh, his skinny Sam. Time. They call him now. That's what is I he call skinny him. now? That's what me and Holly call him, huh? Is oh he yeah, skinny? really? Oh, I he's on. He's on like a which kind of sucks. I feel like he's so good because he was a little chubby. Yeah, you know. I mean. Completely going against any scientific knowledge. Just, just, just thinking. Yeah, you know, Adele, Sam Smith, Chubby, oh, yeah, yeah. good voices. Yeah. Imagine he just sounds like Louis Armstrong now. <laughs> uh, best original score. I think we're both in agreement that the Hateful Eight. Oh my Emilio God. Marconi. I was gonna say if we didn't go over this, I was gonna make like a little rant about how that. I mean, I, uh, even when we were watching it at your house, it was so cool. It was amazing. I felt like I was watching like an old school like Frankenstein. Uh, Dracula type movie, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, very uneasy. Like the yeah, oh, loved it. Loved maybe it. Tarantino yep. can make another ghetto comment, and all the black people can get mad at him because God forbid anyone <laughs> says anything ever. <laughs> oh, um, that would be awesome. I really hope. I don't think he'll be there to accept it because he's like he's, he's, he's very old. old. Yeah, so maybe Quentin Tarantino will accept it again. So I can't just go crazier. Yeah, yeah. I-, I loved the Golden Globes how he just got the award and then went back to his seat. <laughs> Didn't go in the back or anything. Like, and they were trying to like get him, and he's like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm, I'm going back to my seat. Um. Best documentary. I didn't see any of those. I know you saw the one though, right? I saw Cartel Land. Yeah, yeah, which was you very good. It? But I think Amy's gonna win. It's just that's the, the Amy, Winehouse Amy Winehouse one. Yeah, which I really want to see. It looked awesome. Just because that type of you know, it's unfortunate, but that type of celebrity yeah, again, makes for a, an interesting. Yeah, yeah. Best documentary short. I can't speak to any of those. I I, I read online because I did a pool. I read online that Body Team 12 is the favorite. Okay. So I went with that. There you go. Don't know much about it. Nope. Um, best makeup and hairstyling. Is there really only three nominees? Maybe there's someone that cut off. I don't think so. No? Maybe there's only three? Yeah, I think there's only three. Um, this, this, this couldn't refuse to nominate more. I, I'm going to go with Mad Max. I don't yeah. know. I don't know what. What's kind with of, the Revenant I don't, again? I don't, yeah, again. Yeah. Like also, what dirt. the hell is that second one? I think I could have done the makeup on Revenant. Is that uh, a real? Movie? I was just gonna say that is the that... hundred year old man who climbed out the window <laughs> and disappeared. I feel like also disappeared is spelled wrong. Is it really? Yeah. This. this Which uh, one is this? What, what is it? Movie phone? I mean, maybe that's how they spelled it purposely, but disappeared has two P's. Oh, yeah. Maybe I don't know. But anyway, that is the most. Surprised we haven't that, heard more about that hundred year old man movie. How is that DVD cover going to look? It's gonna, like there's going to be no word. There's going to be no room for words. Oh, I right. mean, for pictures, it's going to be all words. Um, best production design. I think we both agree that it's got to go to either Mad Max or The Martian. Yeah. Right. I would say. Pro, pro, also, production design was really good in Bridge of Spies. It was a period was piece, so you have to always include a period piece in those. And I'm sure I think the Danish was the Danish girl a period piece, or was that just a modern day thing? Uh, I think it was a pair of piece. Yeah. So well, I mean, I think you can also include Bridge of Spies. I just wasn't too th- like overly thrilled with Bridge of Spies t- anyway. But I think Mad Max or The Martian. I love The Martian. I did too. I love the. I love the. Like I said, I just gushed about the, s- the spacesuit. So. Yeah. I think if if Mad Max wins costume or, or something, I mean either either or Mad Max or The Martian for production costume all that shit. Yeah. What um, the what the fuck with the Revenant? The Revenant. If you look at it, the production Revenant design, is nominated. It was literally a forest. It was literally a forest. What production design besides the costumes did they have to do for that movie? That was the the the, the um the fort, like the the wooden walls and the houses and stuff. Like that's it. Yeah, it was actually like shot the last on site. Ten minutes of the movie. How many nominations? It's like nominated for almost everything. That's insane. Film editing. I think I went with the Big Short. Yeah, I think I went with the Big Short on that. Really well done. How they interwove th- basically yep. three different stories with like the breaking the wall, fourth yeah. wall, and stuff yeah, too. Yeah. yeah, that was really really, cool. really good. Um, also, all the other movies on there I've seen and all really cinematography good. probably. Um, yeah, probably Revenant, the Revenant, like we yeah. said. Yeah, uh, sound editing. I went with Mad Max. Yeah, uh, that was just so cool. Yeah, um, the best sound mixing. I I don't, I I gotta be honest with you. I don't know the difference. <laughs> I don't know what the difference what is. is. It? I, I I went both Mad Max. Yeah. So because if you're gonna win for editing, is it? It's. It, I think you'd win for mixing. I'm really concerned about that. Those picks that I made because I. Star Wars is nominated four times. Yep. And I think it's going to win. It's got to win one of those. I think maybe visual effects. Could win visual effects, yeah. Yeah, maybe visual Although effects. Although Mad Max. I mean, Mad Max is really good, but the problem with Mad Max is the the visual effects were really well blended. So maybe that makes for good visual effects, but it, I mean, Star Wars is a space movie. So it's like, yeah. in order to make it believable in space, like you have to have good, I don't know. And again, it's like, how do you, how does the Academy judge these things? I don't know. Right. Um, visual effects, like say probably maybe Star Wars, maybe yeah. Mad Max. Although Ex Machina was really good too. I was mean, it? Um, Alicia, 
I don't know how to say her last name, and I don't even know what it is. Kangarda? Um, Vic Vikander. Nope, that's not her. No, she's from the Danish girl. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, the girl uh, that plays the the girl in uh, in Ex Machina, the robot. There, she's constantly like she looks like a real person, but parts of her are robot, huh. and it's like it's they filmed it with her, like actually her, and then they just afterwards they made it with the which was I, I watched a special feature on how they did it and it looked really cool. So I think that 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 could maybe be a dark horse for that one. Um, don't know the short film animated. Uh, bear well, story sounds interesting. <laughs> bear, bear story. It's the it's the bear short bear. It's the short animated film about the bear from Revenant. Oh, I think good for it. It deserved it. Best mm-hmm. short film live action, and too bad Sean wasn't here because Sean saw all these. Really? Yeah. He well. He's not doing anything else at cable <laughs> at cable car <laughs> cinema. Oh, they had them all. They they show them every year, and I was meaning to go this year, but didn't end up doing it. But it's anyway, it's a bad storm. It's gonna be a great Oscars. It is it's a bad storm. I uh, I can't wait. I can't we'll wait. be tweeting. We will be tweeting. So follow us at Average Nobodies. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you made it all the way here to the end, please comment below and let us know that you made it all the way here. That would be fantastic. Yeah. Uh, and until next time on podcast number twenty, I'm Matt. I'm Ryan. And have a good day. Goodbye, everyone.